We're done. I'm done. No, I'm done. Thank you. Oh, yes, we have stopped. Oh, right. Um, okay, that's the end of that. Hello there, and welcome back to part two of the Acorn Electron video right here on Wi-Fi Sheep with me, Tom. Um, what have we been doing since the last video? Well, I'm a bit late making this video, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, loads of stuff going on. Calorachi monitor, which you may remember from the last video, a little black and white portable uh, CRT. I've swapped it out for a uh, LCD HD monitor just because it's easier for the video so we can see what we're doing, get a bigger picture, plus it's in colour. Uh, connected to the Acorn Electron via a RGB DIN to SCART cable. It's the one I normally use for the BBC Micros. It's uh, compatible with the Electron, so we actually got a uh, very crisp RGB output. Now, the Electron went out to the Stafford Raspberry Pi Jam. And there's a little bit of footage of that. And yeah, it, it did all right, and we loaded some software. Now, I have made a slight improvement. Uh, last time, we loaded from WAV files on uh, my MacBook by plugging in and playing the files through. I've now managed to get the files from WAV to uh, MP3 format and onto my iPhone 5C. I was thinking, could I actually stream the data straight from the iPhone? So the 5C has the, where are we? Has the um, headphone socket. So using the tape adapter from before, we can plug the ear cable, which is this one, into the uh, headphone jack. Now obviously when I log into the phone, which I'll just do off camera because I'm not telling everyone my password, or my enter pin, right, there we go. I've then set up an Acorn playlist. You can see that's all right on the phone. Uh, and I've actually got uh, all the games loaded on the playlist. And yes, I've misspelled Meteors, and I, I'm aware of that. Um, right, I've got to say a few shout outs and thank yous without knocking the camera. Uh, first of all, big thank you to Fireball XL55. Um, you've commented on quite a few of my videos of late, suggesting to me why I aren't using the wildcard loading method. What that is, is basically uh, when I type chain to load a, a program, so if we say chain, before I have to find the file name, uh, the wildcard simply is a space and another speech mark followed by return. That will then search for anything, uh, the, the first program it finds, it doesn't matter what it's called, it will just find it and try and load it. That's a lot simpler than trying to find out what the files you're trying to load are and etc. 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 So, et cetera. so um, big thank you for that. It's just one of the things I plain forgot, to be honest with you. I don't do a lot of tape loading. Um, anyway, so now that's searching, let's just go back to the phone. Now you won't hear anything because it's plugged in, but if I try um, SimCity, there we go. So we're now streaming SimCity from the phone. And we're now loading in. This takes a horrendous amount of time. It's about 10 minutes to load. It gets to the splash screen quite quick, but yeah. Okay, this part is fun. Um, loading in the splash screen, line by line. Oh dear. Hopefully you can see that all right. This monitor's always been a bit iffy with um, low light levels and because it's getting the evening, I need to get better light in here really. But um, Also the electron gone very, very yellow. It's not as yellow as that, that's just the light in the room. Um, but these machines could do with a bit of a, uh, a retro brighting session and a service, which we'll have to do next year now when the uh, summer comes around again. I think we're almost there. Still a nice splash screen, if nothing else. Oh, there we go. Okay, we've now entered the uh, flickery stage. It's um, not the most dignified load up, to be honest with you, this game. It sort of has to uh, 
So we'll put things on screen in the video RAM. Yeah, that flicker you can see is actually the flicker. It's not a monitor issue with the camera or anything. It, it is actually flickering like that um, on screen. Uh, here we are now building up the um, menu sort of toolbar of the game line by line. And there we go. SimCity loaded and ready to play. So I just make sure on the uh, iPhone we've actually stopped the uh, file. Ready to play now, yeah, so um, I don't know. Uh, new Vil, enter, terraforming. The uh, arrow keys or curse keys, which are shared with about four other, four other keys rather on the uh, electron scrolls around the map and then it's uh, the cursor is moved by Z, X, I think it's asterisk and question mark so you can sort of uh, move around select residential put the residential down so you get the idea of how that works um, that's slow to load admittedly Now another uh, comment from the last YouTube video, this was from BL. Uh, thank you so much for taking time out to uh, message me about this, was uh, pointing to me at a website where you could easily get hold of the WAV files for BBC Electron, sorry, Acorn Electron or BBC Micro. To be honest with you, I'd actually already got to this website before um, I made the first video, that's where I got the master data from that we were using to stream to the uh, machines. However, it's quite an interesting site. Uh, you can simply select what you want. So uh, in this case, Acorn Game List. And you actually you've got a, a list of um, zip files. It actually says it up there, the you know, chain command of how to load these. So it's a bit like duh on my case, but never mind. Uh, pick a game to play. Um, arcade Soccer. So it then streams a file like this, and you can simply click play. And I'll just pause. So you get the idea of that. So you could stream the data straight from the website to an actual Acorn Electron, and the same for a BBC Micro. And what I'd really like to do, and sort of just for the hell of it, is to try and get tape deck to work and get data back onto actual cassette tape so we can play it authentically into an electron as it would have done in the day. So we'll just move iPhone out of the way. And I do have a slightly better sort of Korean made Ferguson uh, tape deck, uh, which I haven't tested until now. What I think I'm going to do is I will plug the interface cables into the actual unit and try and do it so you can see what we're doing. There we go. So we'll plug remote. It's actually labelled which is really nice. So Yeah, if I can get that in. Yes I can. There we go. So that's now incorrect. So this should be compatible if it works, although it's never actually been tested. What I am actually going to need, though, is an original tape to try and test with. So I'm going to run me through what I had, and I actually found I have these uh, promotional material for the actual electron. I can't think many of these booklets survive to be honest with you. Um, we've even got a uh, software catalogue for the machine with all the different titles you could buy for the Electron. I've got quite a nice copy of the original manual and I have 
the introductory cassette, which does have a copy of the cassette. I do, however, have another copy of the cassette. So these tapes are over 30 years old, but hopefully, if the tape deck works, we might be able to actually load up the uh, original cassette. So let's give that a go, see what happens. If ever there was a competition for things not working, I'd probably win it right now. Okay, I have never turned this cassette deck on. I have no idea if it works, but I'm gonna plug it in now, see what happens. Okay, here we go. So far, so good. Bear in mind, this probably hasn't run for 20 years easily. So let's take the cassette out. Side A. To probably chew it up now. Okay, note to self, I actually put the cassette in the correct way around. Oh, it's been such a long time since I've dealt with cassettes. Okay, let's rewind to the beginning. Hmm. So it seems to be working. Let's just take the, uh, maybe it doesn't work with the remote, or does that work? Oh dear. I don't think our cassette deck's actually working. Yeah, um, let's get out of the way of the light a minute. The power is definitely on to it. I might check the um, fuse in the plug just to see if that's a problem. Okay, so a bit of a lesson in British standard uh, high voltage three pin plugs. You have an earth and then you have a left and right positive negative. And they also have a fuse inside. And sometimes the fuse can blow for various reasons, or it's just dislodged, or is even missing in some cases. So we'll just take the screw out. Let's have a look. There's the fuse, 3 amp. Might go and grab my multimeter. Okay, so we just want to put a current through, nothing else. So let's just make sure that these two are actually connecting. So, yep, there we go. Okay. Yep, the fuse is fine. Right, it's not the plug then. Okay, I've just rigged up some uh, brighter light so you can see what we're doing. Um, just taking this last screw out. So we hope we can actually uh, stop that. So we can actually just lift the unit up. Have a look, that bit might have gone wrong. Hmm. From the wires, as you might expect. Um, See that all right, but uh, oh dear, yeah, something to smell a bit bad. I don't know if it's actually a smell of a capacitor or just sort of fag smoke or something, but something's gone a bit bad. We'll just uh, just test the internal fuse in case that's gone. Just a quick test here, just to see. That's fine. Hmm. I'm just putting it back together and I was just trying to get into that screw hole there. I touched this with my finger and the bloody thing shocked me despite being off the main. So it's obviously discharging straight through the. Uh... Well, I think it's safe to say I'm rather annoyed about that. Um, the only other one I've got is this which I don't have the correct cable to interface with and I didn't think it was going to work. But you know what? Let's 
plug it in and see what it does. Alright, this one I think will probably just blow up and do something hilarious, so let's, uh, let's try plugging that in. See what it does or doesn't do. Are you ready? Oh my god, it's working. Really sure there's a clean or anything with it, but let's just let's put our cassette in, see what it does. And figure out which way around that goes. He says. I think it's just I've not used cassettes in years. Well there you go. Let's just turn the volume up down. Okay, that works. The side of the unit. The problem is we've only got the DIN and the ear socket, but I wonder if we could just use the DIN to ear because I haven't got a DIN to DIN cable. Um, hmm. So I wonder if we can plug the ear socket into there, the DIN into the electron, see if it will play the tape. Okay, hopefully you can see that lighting conditions are appalling. Um, We've connected the ear socket here into the um, DIN audio. Electron's back on. I'm just going to rewind this tape. I'm astonished this works, in all honesty. <laughs> it didn't look like it wanted to. Okay, it doesn't have an auto uh, stop, so you have to uh, stop the tape. Okay, so if I now chain, take the volume up a little bit, chain, and this wild card. Ready? Let's try, see what happens. Oh, hello. I've actually found some data. Intro, and now we're counting. Running for a couple of minutes now. No. Press stop, press space to continue. I have no idea what the time is late, but I'll say a uh, past three, why not? Please enter the site. Do you really need to know the time? Oh god, the time at the time. Uh sixteen thirty-nine and Yes. Play the tape again, really. Oh. We're going to have to load each program in. God, blimey. Okay, so we've stopped that. That took like five minutes. Probably isn't even worth it. Keyboard. Okay. Uh. Right. Yeah. 
yes. Oh, please. Yeah, um, I am not gonna. No, I'm not doing this. Right, okay, I'm done. We're done. I'm done. No, I'm done. I think it's done. Yes, we have stopped. Oh, right. Um, okay, that's the end of that. Just noticed it's actually got a school or something, great name engraved on the back of it. Brookvale Comp, Brookvale Comprehensive Science. So I'm assuming that must be some sort of Midlands school or something, Central England. Um, I might look that up, see if I can find out. But if you went to that school, I've got your science department's uh, tape deck for a BBC Micro. I'm just astonished that's actually worked at all. Okay, um, yeah, it makes fortunes. I'm annoyed about the other one not working. I'm amazed this one even works at all, but it does. Um, I was really hoping to be able to get some data onto some fresh cassette tape, make up some sort of mixtapes, if you like, of uh, games and stuff. Um, unfortunately, I will need to fathom out a way of getting an audio feed from my MacBook or iPhone into this data recorder uh, when it's only got a DIN in. Um, I suppose it's possible to try and rig something up quite crudely. Uh, I'll have to have a think about it, but um, I think we'll leave that there for now. So thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, rate and subscribe to us right here on the Wi-Fi Sheep. And we'll see you real soon. Bye for now.